Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Time. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can be notified of more content. In our last video, we discussed mitosis. Today, we will be explaining meiosis, or the process by which gametes are made. While mitosis produces daughter cells that are identical to the parent cells, the goal of meiosis is to produce daughter cells with half of the chromosomes that the parent cell has. These daughter cells are called gametes also known as sperm or egg cells. Like mitosis, meiosis also goes through stages of division, but because the goal of meiosis is to produce haploid cells, which only have one set of chromosomes, from diploid cells, which have two sets of chromosomes, cell division occurs twice. The first stage is called meiosis I, and the second stage is called meiosis II. Each stage contains prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we will start with the cell in interphase. Like in mitosis, this is where the cell is growing, copying chromosomes, and preparing for cell division. If you would like more detail about this phase, make sure to check out our video on the cell cycle. Once the cell is done with interphase, it enters prophase. This is where mitosis starts. Prophase has two steps. The first step is called synapsis. This is where the chromosomes begin to condense and pair up. Each chromosome lines up with its homolog pair so that each of the genes are lined up with a corresponding gene on the other chromosome. These groups are called tetrads. So now that all the chromosomes are lined up, chunks of each of the chromosomes are going to switch with the corresponding parts on the other chromosome. This means that they're going to exchange genes. This process is called crossing over. This process is super important because this is what makes each sperm and egg cell unique and creates genetic diversity. If this process didn't exist, then every child that the same two people made would look exactly the same. And it's because of this process that siblings don't look exactly alike. The next phase is metaphase one. Each of the tetrads are going to line up in the middle of the cell or the cell's equator. In anaphase 1, these tetrads are going to be separated and the chromosomes are going to be pulled apart to opposite ends of the cell by spindle fibers. So now that the tetrads are separated, in telophase 1, cytokinesis is going to divide the cell, giving us two cells. The nucleus is going to regrow and now that we have two cells, each cell is going to contain one of the homologous chromosomes. So in humans, there would be 23 full chromosomes in each cell. This concludes meiosis one. Moving on to mitosis two, each of the cells are going to go through another division phase that is going to give us two gametes from each of the cells for a total of four gametes. Meiosis two is pretty much the same as mitosis. The first step in meiosis two is prophase two. The nucleus is going to dissolve and the spindle fibers will form. In metaphase two, the chromosomes are going to line up at the cell's equator. In anaphase two, the chromosomes are going to split up. The chromatids are going to be pulled to opposite ends of the cell. Then telophase two, cytokinesis is going to divide the cells in half, giving us four cells with genetically unique haploid cells, concluding meiosis. Thank you for watching our video. Stay tuned for our next video and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If this video made sense to you, let us know and leave your questions in the comments so we can answer them. As always, thank you for watching Think Science.